My first few years in the window cleaning business, I was incredibly frustrated because I would get rejected and have to deal with low paying nitpicky customers who, who didn't want to pay the prices that I needed to charge to make my business work. And I found myself feeling forced and like I didn't have a choice but to do jobs for dirt cheap. And getting off of uh, properties or getting out of residential homes or off of jobs, exhausted, frustrated, and anxiety, dripping in sweat with all my squeegees, with a pitily little $145 check for cleaning an entire house inside and out, plus screens in, in rich neighborhoods. I was so naive. And I wish I had these YouTube videos like that then. I wish I could have watched me. Just, right? But what's funny is you got to do what you got to do to get to where you got to get. If you don't have uh, all your marketing and advertising and you don't have a reputation online and your phone isn't ringing all the time, you got to do what you got to do. You got to take the jobs that whatever you can get, huh? Until you build a reputation and a clientele and then little by little by little, you keep expanding the top as you dissolve the bottom. You, if you have only one job to choose from and that customer's like, no, nope, I'm not doing it for more than 150. You're probably gonna have to do that for 150 bucks. But if you've got five to choose from and there's five more coming in every day, then you're gonna be like, uh, no, I can't do that for under 250. And the customer's gonna be like, ah, oh, okay, let's do it. You, you wouldn't actually say that, but what I mean is he who cares less wins and or he or she who cares less wins. And the, and the more options that you have is the more you can be a little bit more risky with your decision making and your risk taking. And it's really not that much of a risk when you learn how to uh, qualify yourself and how to separate yourself and how to position yourself and market your business to a point where the customer can see the value and see and understand what they're paying for. Uh, so, I just want you to be aware of the game that you're playing in this window cleaning game. This is Keith Kelfus with a window cleaning blueprint dog. And uh, I grew a window cleaning business from nothing. From, if you see my other videos, I mean, literally it went to, <clears throat> I think it was Home Depot or Lowe's with $50. And I bought a scrubber and a squeegee and some dish soap and went up and down strip malls and plazas doing a, window cleaning just to not get evicted from our apartment. And that's how I started was, you know, cold, broke, and scared. So, but here's the, the underlying point of what I want to make in this video is that if you get rejected by customers and you find yourself very frustrated because you're not making the money you want to make, like you, you, you feel like there's no money out there in window cleaning. Cause I remember I, I had a friend who was my mentor in the beginning. He was saying, what are you talking about? We make at least $1,000 a day every single day. He goes, I'm averaging at least $100 an hour. We just did a mansion for $1,500 and another one for $1,200. This one was $800. We did this many houses today. And I would call him up so mad saying, how in the hell are you getting these prices? How are you getting these jobs? How are you doing this? And see what happens is you have to surround yourself in person or on YouTube or live events or you get around a community of winners who have been through all this crud and that are winning. So you have constant feedback, haptic feedback showing you that success is possible. And if it's possible for them, then it's possible for you. Because the biggest mistake that you can make is you can say, yeah, it works for those people, but it doesn't work for me. And if it's not working for you, then there's something that you're doing, you're not doing or something that you're doing wrong or something that you could do better or or maybe you're doing all the stuff right and you're on the right track you just need more time you just need to keep hustling you need to work it out and grind it out and you need another year or two just so you can build that super healthy fat clientele and you know a great website you got your marketing down you're spending money on advertising you have positive reviews you have tons of content on Facebook and Instagram and you even uh, you have a Google, a Google My Business page and you've got really like, like 27 positive reviews and you're networked around, you've got your SEO going and you're, you know, you've got, you've got a clientele and that's growing and it's, 
that's a different video. But when I, what I, what I want to say is that, uh, sorry, I just had a huge cup of coffee and I'm, whew. if you got turned down by like three or four jobs in a row, here's the kicker. You can get so frustrated because you feel like you have to charge even higher prices than you're charging right now, but you feel like you're terrified to do that because nobody is saying yes. You can get angry. You will overpolarize. So that's a partial truth at best that the window cleaning is it's a horrible industry. It's a horrible business. I'm not going to make any money. And those type of thoughts, it feels so real to you because that's what you're seeing. That's what's happening to you. Well, just because you had three people in a row turn you down or seven people in a row, you'll start to believe that that's all that exists. Well, that's the name of the game, but that's not. It's just a percentage. It's if you, I used to do like multi-level marketing and network marketing, uh, Amway type stuff. When I was a teenager, I would be in a suit and tie in full grown adults living rooms, people that were in their forties and fifties, selling them on a plan, plan and <laughs> trying to get people signed up. And I wonder why nobody ever signed up. It's because they had an 18 year old kid in their living room. Dude, I was clean shaven. I put on a, uh, I had a suit and tie and I was marching. I, <laughs> I had a script and everything, dude. I wanted to be a baller so bad when I was, uh, I wanted to be successful. I was listening to motivational tapes until, I remember I lived in this, uh, me and my buddy had a trailer. It was this old beat up trailer we lived in. We bought it for $3,000. I was 18. I want, I was actually just turned 19. <clears throat> I wanted to be successful so bad that I was wearing, uh, buying suits and ties from the thrift store. So I was wearing oversized dress clothes every day. And I went to the dollar store and I bought these big uh, posters and I got markers and I was putting like Zig Ziglar and Tony Robbins and motivational quotes all over the walls in my room and I was taping this shit all over the walls and I would wake up and I'll say, you don't know what you don't know until you have it. Blah, 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 blah. And I was screaming and looking at myself in the mirror, trying to force feed myself being successful to the point where <clears throat> I was definitely brainwashed. I was so angry and so upset. <laughs> Cause I, I didn't want to be poor, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, so you over polarize on the things that don't work as if, as if that's all that exists and that's not all that exists. You have to pull the kind of like Eben Pagan says the emotional needle out of your arm, detach emotionally and just look at it as data. You say, okay, what's my closing rate? Like if I quote 10 window cleaning jobs. Oh, only three of them actually sign up. Maybe if maybe five sign up, maybe your price is too low and you're killing yourself out there, not making any money. Well, let's raise the price. If, if I have 10 to choose from, what if I can get that down to like four or three? And you keep, you track all this and you, and you keep getting a little bit more riskier. You know, if you only have one job to choose from, you're probably going to have to take whatever you can get, right? But if you can look at it as just purely data and work the numbers. I, I think around, man, it had to have been year four for me. It took me way too long and I'm still nowhere where I want to be. But, um, I was in this client's home once. I was terrified, so I was taking on any work that we could get. <clears throat> and because I was so stupid, my website said the Q-tip treatment. We would clean out, scrub out window tracks, bugs and gunk and algae and green stuff, you know, dead bugs. And I'd come in there with like a bucket. Even as I talk about it, I just need to braze over this because it makes me so upset. The customers were following me around looking at my work and inspecting it 
like they had nothing better to do, asking me countless questions. And I was doing this entire house, inside and out, tracks, sills, and screens, for something like $150. It was easily a $450 or $550 window cleaning job. And the customers were so paranoid because they were so like cheap about them spending money <clears throat> or whatever. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm like, I I'm not now, I forgive myself, but that was the only time, because somebody said in my comments earlier, like, have you ever like snapped it or lost it on a customer? I'm like, no, never. That's totally unprofessional. I would never snap on a customer. But there was one time. The customer came up and asked me, because my website said our deluxe package, the Q-tip treatment. Um, they weren't American, so they actually thought, which is totally my fault for not thinking this through, um, because the language barrier. They thought we were going to clean all the window tracks with Q-tips. And he says, where is the Q-tips? You're, <laughs> you're not cleaning with Q-tips, man. And I said, I, I'm, I'm scrubbing. I'm dripping in sweat. Scrubbing the tracks out in total anxiety, dude. I was in so much anxiety that it was just that my hair was standing up like a porcupine. And I was getting older by the second. That's why there's a little bit of gray in here. Because this one job. He says, where are the Q-tips? You're not cleaning with the Q-tips. I looked at him and I go, Q-tips? He's like, yes, with the Q-tips. Q-tips! I'm like, why do you think I'm going to clean your windows with Q-tips? Because it says right here that you're going to clean them with Q-tips. Dude, I don't know what I did, but I just started having a panic attack. I had all these jobs lined up. I wasn't making any money. I was broke. We're living in a one-bedroom apartment. I felt like a loser. My hat's falling off. You know, there's some... Some... Butthead. That is taking clips of the funny things that I do. And he's compiled them all together into uh, uh, videos about me. And at first I thought it was funny, right? But then I was like, that would only be funny to people who really, really know me, right? And they, they know my sense of humor. But to a brand new person, seeing me acting like a maniac for 15 minutes straight, um, I guess I'm overthinking it. Maybe it's a good sign. But anyways, back to what I was saying. Yeah, I, I, I lost it. I started having like a panic attack in the middle of the customer's house and talking really, really fast. And the customer actually got scared and he's like, okay, 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 I, I'll just pay you whatever and fine. And then we, we cleaned up the job, we finished up, the customer got the check and I was so pissed off that the customer was really uncomfortable. And then I left and he still called us back for more work. And eventually I raised my prices and we never did work for that customer ever again. And now I look back, the customer is not even mad at me and I'm not mad at him or anything, but it was, it was unprofessional of me to even put myself in that position. But I'm telling you, dude, you t take somebody and strip them down, uh, or they strip themselves down to where they have nothing. When you're in somebody's house and you've agreed to clean, uh, you know, to do a $500 job for $150 and you're there all day scrubbing someone's window tracks and they're hovering over you, watching you, uh, asking you, countless questions um i don't know i wouldn't even deal with anything it wouldn't even happen to me today did you know what i'm saying you'll say yes and get yourself into situations that you don't even belong in but you gotta get you get in where you fit in that's where i fit in at the time right you get in where you fit in get in where you fit in so be aware of the game that you're playing and know that all this there's a whole bright a broadband like a dynamic but the bandwidth is really wide from like the worst shop of horrors, nightmare jobs ever that you're making no money and cleaning 
houses that are 120 years old where the windows don't even open and close without you breaking them, to which I would never do, to feel like you, like you don't have a choice, to now where you're only cleaning homes with the water-fed pole and you're in and out in a few hours doing, you know, nothing less than $500 a house. And you're just choo, 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 raking in the dough. That dream of having that type of window cleaning business where you're flying and you're just cashing checks. It's, I mean, it's just totally possible. People do it all the time. You just have to realize that that's totally possible for you. And if, even if it doesn't happen right away, it's your aspirational window cleaning business. In time, you will get there. And there will come a day where you're pulling up in your brand new truck or van or you're sending out crews to do it for you and you have this booming business and everything is going like a beautiful symphonic orchestra, like a dance. And you just can't believe, like, how was I, how did my business suck so bad and now it's so great? What changed? Well, the truth is you changed. You raised your self-worth, your values, your standards went up. You realize what's possible because, you know, if, if you don't believe that there's a better business or a better life or better opportunities out there and you don't see that, then you're not even going to go for it if you don't believe it's available for you, right? So it's going to take a, overcoming a lot of rejection, getting door hangers, flyers, business cards, whatever you have to do, going into these beautiful high-end neighborhoods and um, stuff like that. Uh, I'm going to end right here. There's another thing that I want to talk about. And I think, let me know in the comments if you want me to talk about the whole video about this. I was uh, Anthony Heyman from uh, Window Cleaning Anthony on YouTube. Him and his wife and me and my wife, we uh, did a double date. We went to Olive Garden the other night and got some dinner. He's cool, man. And I was telling Anthony, because Anthony's a great window cleaner. I mean, he can literally get in and out of a house in 45 minutes and clean the inside of a monster house. And he's totally relaxed and the windows look perfect. And he's like, he just flies. And he's so calm. I don't know why, and let me know if you relate to this, if you want me to make a video about this. Depending on the client or the energy in the home, I'm a very empathic person, for lack of a better word. Some, pe some homes I can go into and I can fly. I can literally just bang out an entire house and I can get out of the house charged up, 45 minutes, an hour, huge house, whole inside's done, and... But some houses, as soon as I step foot in the house, it's like pure anxiety. My hair stands on end and I, and I lock up and I literally become crippled by this anxiety. And I'm literally, I, I'm, 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 it's, it's torture. By the time I get out of the house, I feel like I've been hit by a bus and I've ran 20 miles and then I've, I feel like uh, just, I'm exhausted for the rest of the entire day and it's my my blood is oozing with cortisol and anxiety just by going in someone's house and I think it's the energy in the house or the people or something like that and and I try to hide it and conceal it and just be calm but I know that anxiety is radiating radiating off of me and maybe the customers can feel it and maybe they haven't called us back. And, and, and I've really, really worked hard to, to fix this. But then I can go into the very next house and just haul ass. And it's like, a, and I always do a great job and always get it done. But I talk to someone like Anthony and he's like, what are you talking about, bro? What are you talking about? It doesn't, um, and that's, so if you want me to make a video about that, I can tell a lot of great stories.